invocation to lounge, Sonny. Invocation to lounge, invitation to pound, civilization back down to word based raw sound, sanctity of language amidst insanity of man, rearranging matter with vanity, sharing sanctuary, safe space without facing, anti visionary judgmentals disgracing us, chasing heart and soul, not just mind. Try to find parts reconstituting whole, chill folks intertwined through grassroots linguistics, all rise on resistance to simply exist, despite wide oaks insistence that. Plantation traditions create validation. That finance acquisition verifies station. But motherfucker, my status is real. Here we stand, passing messages openly from hand to hand. This is Rojo Naku Word fighting on his hand to hand haiku tournament. There's a sign up sheet where y'all will take turns reading haiku if you sign up. I got flags here. I got judges that got the flags. Person on this side will read one. Person on that side will read one. Judges will throw up a flag. Two out of three flags means they win the round. Whoever wins two out of three rounds advances on through the night until we eliminate everybody down to one. I don't know how many people we got signed up, but I'll give y'all a couple more minutes to sign up. Who ain't signed up? Does anybody else got to sign up that haven't signed up? All right, if you have not signed up at all, Throw your hand up for me. If you're not signed up to compete and you're not judging, put your hand up. <laughs> so, this is about sharing and not gawking. I ain't your motherfucking dancing outlaw that does poetry. <laughs> This right here is the motherfucking kimchi poetry jar. At my house, we make kimchi. We let that shit lacto ferment. It makes your gut flour feel good, get you all happy and healthy. Write a fucking poem down, a thought down, a wish down, a hate down, or whatever the fuck you want to write down. If you got one of them cards and you're not competing, write it down, put it in the fucking jar. <laughs> So while we get ready, give y'all a chance to do that before we start the tournament, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I'm gonna tell y'all a story about the first tattoo I got. Because man, isn't it awesome hearing people tell you stories about the meaning of the tattoos they got? <laughs> that shit's awesome. So my story starts when I was 15 years old. I had two younger sisters. And like many nights, I didn't know where my parents was. So I was taking care of my sisters a little bit. You know, it was cool, that was normal, so I was used to it. All right, got my sisters in bed. Hear my dad, storm off the driveway. Country livers, we had a long ass driveway. Storm off the driveway, and I could tell, I could tell he was right just by the way the wheels sounded going up the gravel. Comes in the house, he's like, I saw your motherfucking mom in town at a bar with another man. I'm gonna kill him, Raven, I'm gonna kill him, motherfucker. Being I knew my dad well, I knew he was serious and he was gonna kill the motherfucker. So I shifted into, hold up dad, don't kill the motherfucker mode. So I started talking to him about that, calmed him down to where I could ride with him to town when he went to go kill this guy. Made sure my sisters were asleep, jumped in the truck. We had 14 miles from Hare, Virginia to Farmville, Virginia. In that 14 miles, I convinced my father, leave the gun in the truck. Don't take the gun into the bar. Just go in the bar and beat the dude's ass. That's all you gotta do. So he's like, you're right, boy, you're right. So we get there, he rolls up into place. As soon as he walks in, my mom's like, oh shit, this is fucked up. She's gone, out the back door. My dad starts talking shit to the dude. The dude was drunk, he ain't want nothing to do with my dad. And I don't blame him, I didn't either, to be honest with you. So it wasn't no fight. My dad felt good. Had his little struck going on when we came out. Got back in the truck, went home where my mom was. As you can guess, their relationship at that point was slightly strained. <laughs> so they got to throwing words at each other, and then they got to throwing hands, and then my dad started throwing hands on her, and I, he had never done that, so I stepped in between, stopped it. Not something I normally did, you I just took care of my sisters and tried to hide out. But I stepped in between because I didn't want to see them fighting each other. 
My mom made my dad leave after that. He left the house that night. She changed, like, like putting locks on the windows because we didn't have none and all that shit. Long story short, that caused my parents to get separated. So my dad moved half a mile up the road into this trailer that he rented. I was 16 at that point. That allowed me a lot of creative freedom to bounce from place to place without having to check in with nobody. Not that I had to do much checking in anyways. My dad had one tattoo on his forearm. It said, Doc. That was my mom's name. He decided he didn't like the fact he only had one tattoo that was my mom's name and they weren't even together no more. So he got himself some sewing needles, some Indian ink, and he was going to put my sister Michelle, my sister Corinne, and he said, I hope you don't mind, boy, but I'm not going to put your name. I ain't going to put a man's name on all. I said, it's cool, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's all right. So my dad taught me how to do a stick and poke needle tattoo when I was 16 years old. I wrapped it up, feeling good, sitting in the front room of the trailer, 16-year-old raven, love and peace. I put a peace sign with love on it. I was 16. What the fuck? That made sense. Now, as I've been an adult and got other tattoos and become more jaded and cynical and went to school here at VCU where everybody was <laughs> It got made fun of that you would have peace and love tattooed on you, and it felt stupid to me a lot of times. And dudes would be like, yo, man, you get the tattoo, why don't you go ahead and cover that up, put something over it. But you know what? I ain't into covering it up. Because that's what the fuck I got when I was 16 years old. And now that I'm 41 years old, I don't mind that peace of love, and it's faded. And let me tell you something. Y'all will be jaded, black, and be like, peace, love, no, that, look, motherfucker. It's been hard as fuck for me to feel love, and it's been difficult as fuck to ever feel peace. But I fight for that shit every motherfucking week of my life like a goddamn soldier. I fight for motherfucking peace and love. So y'all start putting your shit in the kimchi jar. The way the shit works, mind, heart, gut. Mind, heart, gut. We talk up in the mind. We thinking about shit. We try to be open-minded. Heart builds minds. That's a lot of open-minded fuckers with black closed heart. Fuck that. Heart built by gut. That's the shit you know. That's the shit you know. Can't nobody tell you. It don't even make sense. They're like, what the fuck? How do you know that, Raymond? I just know, motherfucker. That's what I know. Peace and love. Fuck my mind. Start with my heart first. My gut is the basement. This is the first floor. This is the second floor. And I was giving myself tattoos and trailers, so I didn't know about a second floor for a long time. <laughs> I ain't worried about your mind. So that's the story of my first tattoo. Yeah. Woo! So if y'all see peace and love with my arm and this all faded shit, y'all think less of me all you want. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> all right. Who signed up on this bitch? Anybody else need to sign up? I got seven if I had one more person to be a perfect egg. <laughs> Anybody? All right, cool. So let's just start at the top of the list. Coming up for the lotus flower side, 